Welcome to the first session of Financial Fairy Tales, episode number one. Regardless of how much money that you earn, you can become wealthy. I've heard this all over YouTube, all over the internet, on Facebook, and I keep hearing this and people are like, yeah, 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 I can get wealthy. It doesn't matter if I'm poor. It don't matter if I don't make a lot of money. It don't matter because I got to start somewhere which is true. However, I've been doing a little research. If you don't know, we've talked about how much the average household income is. We've talked about how 40, 50, 60, a large chunk of America could not come up with $2,500 cash within 30 days to solve a financial problem. There is this false presumption that people are gonna become wealthy regardless of what they make. It's simply not true. But I'm gonna tell you what you can do to change that and how you can get around that little hiccup. One of the things that's happening in the FIRE movement, if you don't know, is financial independence, retire early, is many people are not looking at the elephant that's in the room. The large majority of these people were highly paid professionals to begin with, who often married another highly paid professional to begin with. They're constantly engineers, they're attorneys, they're, they're techies. And this makes sense when you go back to this girl who said like average income is seventy to hundred thousand dollars in her circle. It is, but that is not most of America. My good people It's not even close to most of America. So what's happening is people are in these financial bubbles. I make, 100K, my buddy Bill, my girl Gail, we all make 100K, so there's this presumption that everyone else is making this kind of money. And I will tell you, it is much easier to become wealthy or rich making 100K a year than it is becoming that way making $35,000 a year. And you also hear this thing, it's possible at any income level, it's just gonna take time. Now that's the devil in the details. How much time is it going to take you? On average, we're talking 40 to 60 years if you have a low income. If you have a very high income, you can do it in 10 to 15. So everyone's saying this stuff, but they're not really diving into the detail because once again, the devil is in the details. So what is one to do? We have all this information, people are gassing you up. First principle here at money, income and profit, make more money. Second principle, manage the money you make very well. How did we get here? We have so many people talking about this as if it is normal. What we have done and what we continue to do in every strata is take the exception and cast it out as it's the norm. As I said in last night's live stream, I had someone, a subscriber, Sun Tzu, post that if you don't have $2,000 saved that you're, and you have children, you're negligent, which I fully agree because you should have more. It was a firestorm. There were many angry people who was like, I can't do it. I don't have enough money. I didn't really get into it with my make more money mantra because once I said, hey, just put away 25 bucks per week. It's 100 bucks a month. It's and I, that got shot down. These people were not ready to make more money. They didn't have the right mindset. Many of the people who watch this channel are in the financial minority. And I'm not talking about you're in the top 10%. I'm not talking about you're in the top 5%. You, my good people, are in the top 0.5%. 90% of the people in this country do not make $100,000 a year, which is 70 to 100, you marry someone who makes 70 to 100, then the fire movement and the investment and being able to save and invest 40, 50, 60 thousand dollars a year, that becomes very doable. And let's talk about that. If you're a long time subscriber, how many times have I said, if you're married, you should live on one income? I didn't call it this fancy fire movement, I call it sound practical money management. If you're married to a woman, and you make 50 and she make 50, if you lived on your one income, you could do amazing things. Remember my story about the two school teachers who never made more than $20,000 a piece, so collectively they made 40,000, and they were able to buy property. 
Once again, this is not a fire movement. This is sound, practical advice that I have been speaking for well over a decade. What really burns my buttons is the rebranding of money management into you're now retiring. That's what gets me upset. That's what it's like I call faults on. What can you do? And we're gonna actually give you some guidelines because you notice people always talk about percentages. They never get into specifics. It's always this, it could be this. Maybe I'm gonna give you some hard numbers. And I'm gonna give you some age ranges. And don't freak out if you're not here yet. This is something to expire to. This is coming from a person who was formerly homeless. This is coming from a person who dropped out of college junior year. This is coming from a person who had a job for a very long time, which means more than likely my financial situation was much worse than your current financial situation. If you're 25 and you have a job that makes 35, you need a side hustle, a side business that makes 10 to 20 K a year, 25 years old, you want to be at 50 to $60,000 per year through the combination of a job and a side hustle. Now here is the rub. You can't quit your job until that side hustle gets to six figures. And this is why when you start in this business, it's going to take you time to learn the business. And I'm talking years. It's not going to happen in a few months. It's not going to happen in a few weeks. Uh, someone had posted on Facebook talking about the vast number of people who have started YouTube channels and blogs last year. It is amazing because most of them are going to fail. It's not because these people are not brilliant or hardworking. That has nothing to do with it. They are unseasoned business people. Now to stage two, once you're in your thirties, you as a single person should be close to a hundred K. I know that once again, if you're not there, don't freak out. Unlight that torch, put down the pitchfork. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to be that light in the darkness because I know many of you are nowhere near that based upon the numbers. I know what the numbers are. I know what people are. I know what the economy is doing to you. I'm giving you guidelines. I'm giving you numbers and I'm giving you age references because they matter. 35, you should be at 150 to 200 K as a single person. And this is going to be a biggie. If you get married, you should marry a woman who is on the same financial path that you are. Because if you don't, what's going to happen is you will be busting, as we used to call it, killing dragons, making it rain, creating hay, and you're going to see your money go this way. It's going to go sideways. It's not going to go up. It's going to go sideways to her and her needs and wants and desires because she's not on the same financial path that you are. Who you marry will greatly predict your future wealth. Moving on. So you're 40, you should be at 200 K have a business and the option to scale that business up to a million. Now, why did I say an option? You should be at 200 K as a business owner. There are many ways that you can get around getting stuff and not actually get it in your personal name, essentially have the business pay for it and create a tax deduction. So you're not really going to take quote that 200 K out the business. Maybe if you want to buy a house and pay cash, you take it out one year, take the tax hit. Cool. But no, you, this is where the seasoning comes in. This is where the networking comes in. And this is where talking to people, because one of the reasons that I give you these benchmarks when I arrived at these financial levels is when my life changed. That's why I'm giving them to you. I just don't believe that you're going to become financially independent, making 35 K a year. I don't think it's going to happen in 10 years. I don't think it's going to happen in 20 years. I don't think it's going to happen in 30 years. And this is why you don't have enough money. And we'll get into this with your basic financial education about accelerated income to really get ahead of taxes, inflation, and other erosionary elements to your money. You just, you just tread in water. I mean, you can feed your family and you can just get by, but it's very hard. So at some point in your life, you're going to have to have extreme financial acceleration to get out of the normalcy of the everyday Joe and man, because as long as you stay in that average position and we can look at these people who are literally being held hostage by the government, 
800,000 people times their mates, times their children. We're talking about millions of people here who are being impacted by this shutdown. And not to be gleeful, but look at what's happening to them and they've missed two paychecks. Imagine if half of America missed two paychecks. What would happen? Anarchy is what would happen because we're so financially tight that there is no excess, there is no abundance, there is no extra. Once again, I'm giving you my path. I'm not giving you this information that, hey, you should get in the stock market. I'll talk about my experience in the stock market, which wasn't horrible, but I will talk about that in another video. What you have to do is leave the fairy tales alone. If you know that you're making 35, 40 K and you don't live an extravagant life, you're not eating out all the time. And it is still a struggle. That is your common sense saying, Hey, there's a problem here. And the problem is there's not enough money in the pipeline due to this wonderful thing, the internet, it gives more people the leverage to leverage out of that class. And this is something else too. Uh, yesterday I was making a lot of predictions. Class is going to start coming back in its proper forms. Class was predicated on income. It was not predicated on education. And much to their credit, many millennials and the group that came after them have figured out that I am not middle class. So what if I have my MBA? I don't have a job, man. They were like, wait a minute, I am not middle class. I have a college degree, I graduated with a 3.9, and I'm living in my parents' basement, neither went to school. And they doing better than I am financially. There's something amiss. They're figuring it out. So if you wanna be middle class, going on those numbers I gave you, because you know there's uh, nine to 10 real levels of class, there's lower, that's lower, lower class. This is your trailer trash. The wonderful whites of West Virginia. Google it. Then you have your middle lower class. This is like your maids and stuff. And then you have your lower class. These are people who are just on that dividing line between lower middle class. There's different lines of separation. There's just not these three buckets because the complexion and spectrum of people is just too varied just to have these three big buckets. So there's really nine, 10 or 12 if you look at it. And most of the country is lower middle class or upper low class. That's where most of the people are based upon their income. So for you to escape this, you got to bust. And then we'll be talking about more of that later. So if you got any comments, how do you feel about this information that I dropped down to you? What else do you think is a financial fairy tale? Because I'm here to tell you, as a person who was homeless, as a person who has went through extreme financial hardship, you're going to need to make more money and you need to manage the money very well. Because if you don't manage your money, your money's going to be at you. How long have I been saying that? Yeah, I'm a little up in my feelings. I'm a little ex extra with this because I see people rebranding concepts that I know to be sound, practical financial advice as it is some new was, some new wow, the new shiny thing. This is something that people have been doing for centuries. Yes, centuries. So once again, I'm up in my feelings. You know what it is. If you want to get your basic financial education, go below. It's going to be in one of the first links. There'll be two comments and they'll be below there. And I'll see you guys in the next video, which might be today. Because like I said, I'm up in my feelings, man. I'm up in my feelings. We've got some fresh new young talent doing some things that I know you haven't heard before. One, two, three. Listen. Listen.